there you are. We are looking at some complex cognitive processes. This is part two, learning strategies and tactics. We are talking about note-taking. I am Andrew Johnson, Minnesota State University, Mankato. Again, note-taking, why we take notes. Yes, to record the information, but it is also a way for us to be actively engaged in the learning, both as we read and as we're listening in class. When I'm reading about something of which I know little, I take notes so I can see it on the page, I can organize it, but also to stay cognitively engaged. Especially if I'm reading about something with which I have little knowledge, or I'm listening to something with which I have little background knowledge. I need to take notes. It keeps me cognitively engaged. It helps us encode the information. Encode means to take it in, organize it and put it in long-term memory because you can see the structure and how one thing relates to another and the paper becomes an external form of long-term memory and the actual notes are a form of short-term memory because we can see it all. Short-term memory doesn't have to hold it all. So it becomes both an external form of short-term memory to help us process and long-term memory in that we hang on to our notes. <clears throat> we have to teach strategies to our students to help them take notes if we want them to take notes effectively. I'm going to look at guided notes and double journal entry. This first one, double journal entry, is as you're reading, you take notes exactly on what is in the text, and on this side is the subjective area, what you think about it. This side is the objective, the site is thus subjective. If you are in class, these are the notes you're hearing from the professor. This is your ideas or what you think about it. Thinking frame for taking notes. You listen, underline main headings ideas, list supporting points using numbers, use letters to show supporting points, and you teach that process explicitly. This is a thinking frame. By the way, I want to get back to what is a guided note. A guided notes are when you have an outline or structure or headings. When you're first teaching this, it's a form of guided practice or scaffolding. That you have the headings there, and if you really want to be uh, scaffolded or structured, you actually have the number of points under each one, point one, point two, point three. That's a form of scaffolding. And there's the double journal entry. The objective here and subjective, your ideas or what you think about it there. Summarizing is a cognitive process. You teach it explicitly. You break it down into steps. Read the text or listen. Record just the important ideas. Don't use complete sentences. Describe using as a few words as possible. And to teach this, you would practice in large group. Boys and girls, what is important here? You'd read a passage out loud, and then you'd ask students what the main idea is, and you'd record it. Cognitive modeling. That's the end of part two. The next one, part three, will be looking at problem-solving strategies.